Tantric Buddhism also has a unique structure of practice and theory the other two do not have. For one is the elevation of the idea of mantra. Mantras such as the famous Tibetan one, Om Mani Padme Hum, praise to the jewel in the lotus that I am. So jewel points to a male feature. It is hard and crystal clear. The jewel is in the lotus, which represents passive femininity. Whether we like these stereotypes of the sexes or not, that's what it represents. So mantra literally means to move the mind, and these chants are doing just that. They're pointing the consciousness of the practitioner to certain ideas upon which to meditate. A mandala is a visual representation of realities towards which the practitioner seeks to, to move. And the mudra point to hand gestures the Buddha himself made, uh, the earth-touching hand gesture, the have-no-fear hand gesture. These are also ways of expressing Buddhist truth in the Tantric tradition. But then these also correspond, these three practices, to the uh, cosmic notions of the three secrets or three mysteries, is a better word, the triguhya of body, speech, and mind. So speech is pointed to, points to the microcosmic resonating aspect of the universe and is the building block of everything. And that is also connected with mantra. Mind is next and uh, the mandala frames your mental consciousness. So it's visual. And this points to the mesocosm of our world, the place where you live your day-to-day -day life. And then finally, mudra points to the macrocosm, the embodied physical universe. So from microcosm to mesocosm to macrocosm, the tantric practitioner seeks to combine them all into one reality in their mind.